In chemistry, a radical is an atom, molecule, or ion that has an unpaired valence electron. With some exceptions, these unpaired electrons make radicals highly chemically reactive. Many radicals spontaneously dimerize. Most organic radicals have short lifetimes. A notable example of a radical is the hydroxyl radical HO, a molecule that has one unpaired electron on the oxygen atom. Two other examples are triplet oxygen and triplet carbon, CH2, which have two unpaired electrons. Radicals may be generated in a number of ways, but typical methods involve redox reactions. Ionizing radiation, heat, electrical discharges, and electrolysis are known to produce radicals. Radicals are intermediates in many chemical reactions, more so than is apparent from the balanced equations. Radicals are important in combustion, atmospheric chemistry, polymerization, plasma chemistry, biochemistry, and many other chemical processes. A large fraction of natural products is generated by radical generating enzymes. In living organisms, the radicals superoxide and nitric oxide and their reaction products regulate many processes, such as control of vascular tone and thus blood pressure. They also play a key role in the intermediary metabolism of various biological compounds. Such radicals can even be messengers in a process dubbed redox signaling. A radical may be trapped within a solvent cage or be otherwise bound. Depiction in chemical reactions in chemical equations, radicals are frequently denoted by a dot placed immediately to the right of the atomic symbol or molecular formula as follows. C L 2 U B 2 C L Display style mathem CL underscore two X right arrow UV two mathem CL CDOT Radical reaction mechanisms use single headed arrows to depict the movement of single electrons. The homolytic cleavage of the breaking bond is drawn with a fish hook arrow to distinguish from the usual movement of two electrons depicted by a standard curly arrow. The second electron of the breaking bond also moves to pair up with the attacking radical electron, this is not explicitly indicated in this case. Radicals also take part in radical addition and radical substitution as reactive intermediates. Chain reactions involving radicals can usually be divided into three distinct processes. These are initiation, propagation, and termination. Initiation reactions are those that result in a net increase in the number of radicals. They may involve the formation of radicals from stable species as in reaction 1 above or they may involve reactions of radicals with stable species to form more radicals. Propagation reactions are those reactions involving radicals in which the total number of radicals remains the same. Termination reactions are those reactions resulting in a net decrease in the number of radicals. Typically two radicals combine to form a more stable species, for example, 2ClCl2. Formation Hemolysis Radicals can form by breaking of covalent bonds by hemolysis. The homolytic bond dissociation energies, usually abbreviated as delta H degree, are a measure of bond strength. Splitting H2 into 2H, for example, requires a delta H degree of plus 435 kJ mol 1, while splitting Cl2 into 2Cl requires a delta H degree of plus 243 kJ mol 1. For weak bonds, hemolysis can be induced thermally. Strong bonds require high energy photons or even flames to induce hemolysis. From other radicals Radicals add to non-radicals to give new radicals. This process is the basis of the radical chain reaction. Being prevalent and a deradical, O2 reacts with many organic compounds to generate radicals together with hydroperoxide radical. This process is related to rancidification of unsaturated fats. One electron redox. 
Radicals may also be formed by single electron oxidation or reduction of an atom or molecule. These redox reactions occur in electrochemical cells and in ionization chambers of mass spectrometers. Persistence and stability Although radicals are generally short-lived due to their reactivity, there are long-lived radicals. These are categorized as follows. Stable radicals the prime example of a stable radical is molecular dioxygen O2. Another common example is nitric oxide NO. Organic radicals can be long-lived if they occur in a conjugated pi system, such as the radical derived from alpha tocopherol vitamin E. There are also hundreds of examples of thiazole radicals, which show low reactivity and remarkable thermodynamic stability with only a very limited extent of pi resonance stabilization. Persistent radicals Persistent radical compounds are those whose longevity is due to steric crowding around the radical center, which makes it physically difficult for the radical to react with another molecule. Examples of these include Gomberg's triphenylmethyl radical, Fremy. S salt, potassium nitrosidosulfonate, KSO3, 2NO, aminoxyls, general formula R2NO, such as tempo, TEMPOL, nitronyl nitroxides, and azephenylinols and radicals derived from PTM perchlorophenylmethyl radical and TTM tris 2, 4, 6 trichlorophenyl methyl radical. Persistent radicals are generated in great quantity during combustion, and may be responsible for the oxidative stress resulting in cardiopulmonary disease and probably cancer that has been attributed to exposure to airborne fine particles. Deradicals Deradicals are molecules containing two radical centers. Multiple radical centers can exist in a molecule. Atmospheric oxygen naturally exists as a deradical in its ground state as triplet oxygen. The low reactivity of atmospheric oxygen is due to its deradical state. Non-radical states of dioxygen are actually less stable than the deradical. The relative stability of the oxygen deradical is primarily due to the spin-forbidden nature of the triplet-singlet transition required for it to grab electrons, i.e. oxidize. The deradical state of oxygen also results in its paramagnetic character, which is demonstrated by its attraction to an external magnet. Deradicals can also occur in metal oxo complexes, lending themselves for studies of spin forbidden reactions in transition metal chemistry. Reactivity Radical alkyl intermediates are stabilized by similar physical processes to carbocations. As a general rule, the more substituted the radical center is, the more stable it is. This directs their reactions. Thus, formation of a tertiary radical, R3C, is favored over secondary, R2HC, which is favored over primary, RH2C. Likewise, radicals next to functional groups such as carbonyl, nitrile, and ether are more stable than tertiary alkyl radicals. Radicals attack double bonds. However, unlike similar ions, such radical reactions are not as much directed by electrostatic interactions. For example, the reactivity of nucleophilic ions with alpha, beta unsaturated compounds C equals C, C equals o, is directed by the electron withdrawing effect of the oxygen, resulting in a partial positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. There are two reactions that are observed in the ionic case, the carbonyl is attacked in a direct addition to carbonyl, or the vinyl is attacked in conjugate addition, and in either case, the charge on the nucleophile is taken by the oxygen. Radicals add rapidly to the double bond, and the resulting alpha radical carbonyl is relatively stable, it can couple with another molecule or be oxidized. Nonetheless, the electrophilic, neutrophilic character of radicals has been shown in a variety of instances. One example is the alternating tendency of the copolymerization of malic anhydride electrophilic, and styrene slightly nucleophilic. In intramolecular reactions, precise control can be achieved despite the extreme reactivity of radicals. In general, radicals attack the closest reactive site the most readily. Therefore, when there is a choice, a preference for five-membered rings is observed, four-membered rings are too strained, and collisions with carbons six or more atoms away in the chain are infrequent. 
Triplet carbons and nitrines, which are diradicals, have distinctive chemistry. Combustion A familiar radical reaction is combustion. The oxygen molecule is a stable diradical, best represented by OO. Because spins of the electrons are parallel, this molecule is stable. While the ground state of oxygen is this unreactive spin unpaired triplet diradical, an extremely reactive spin paired singlet state is available. For combustion to occur, the energy barrier between these must be overcome. This barrier can be overcome by heat, requiring high temperatures. The triplet singlet transition is also forbidden. This presents an additional barrier to the reaction. It also means molecular oxygen is relatively unreactive at room temperature except in the presence of a catalytic heavy atom such as iron or copper. Combustion consists of various radical chain reactions that the singlet radical can initiate. The flammability of a given material strongly depends on the concentration of radicals that must be obtained before initiation and propagation reactions dominate leading to combustion of the material. Once the combustible material has been consumed, termination reactions again dominate and the flame dies out. As indicated, promotion of propagation or termination reactions alters flammability. For example, because lead itself deactivates radicals in the gasoline-air mixture, tetraethyl lead was once commonly added to gasoline. This prevents the combustion from initiating in an uncontrolled manner or in unburned residues engine knocking, or premature ignition pre-ignition. When a hydrocarbon is burned, a large number of different oxygen radicals are involved. Initially, hydroperoxyl radical who, are formed. These then react further to give organic hydroperoxides that break up into hydroxyl radicals ho. Polymerization In addition to combustion, many polymerization reactions involve radicals. As a result, many plastics, enamels, and other polymers are formed through radical polymerization. For instance, drying oils and alkyd paints harden due to radical crosslinking by oxygen from the atmosphere. Recent advances in radical polymerization methods, known as living radical polymerization, include Reversible addition fragmentation chain transfer, raft Atom transfer radical polymerization ATRP. Nitroxide mediated polymerization NMP. These methods produce polymers with a much narrower distribution of molecular weights. Atmospheric radicals The most common radical in the lower atmosphere is molecular dioxygen. Photodissociation of source molecules produces other radicals. In the lower atmosphere, important radical are produced by the photodissociation of nitrogen dioxide to an oxygen atom and nitric oxide, CEQ. 1. 1 below, which plays a key role in smog formation, and the photodissociation of ozone to give the excited oxygen atom O, 1D, CEQ. 1. 2 below. The net and return reactions are also shown, EQ, 1. 3 and EQ, 1. 4, respectively. In the upper atmosphere, the photodissociation of normally unreactive chlorofluorocarbons CFCs, by solar ultraviolet radiation is an important source of radicals CEQ, one below. These reactions give the chlorine radical, Cl, which catalyzes the conversion of ozone to O2, i.e., ozone depletion EQ, 2. 2 EQ, 2. 4 below. Such reactions cause the depletion of the ozone layer, especially since the chlorine radical is free to engage in another reaction chain. Consequently, the use of chlorofluorocarbons as refrigerants has been restricted. In biology, radicals play important roles in biology. Many of these are necessary for life, such as the intracellular killing of bacteria by phagocytic cells such as granulocytes and macrophages. Radicals are involved in cell signaling processes, known as redox signaling. For example, radical attack of linoleic acid produces a series of 13 hydroxyoctadecadienoic acids and 9 hydroxyoctadecadienoic acids, which may act to regulate localized tissue inflammatory and or healing responses, pain perception, and the proliferation of malignant cells. 
Radical attacks on arachidonic acid and docosahexanoic acid produce a similar but broader array of signaling products. Radicals may also be involved in Parkinson's disease, senile and drug-induced deafness, schizophrenia, and Alzheimer's. The classic free radical syndrome, the iron storage disease hemochromatosis, is typically associated with a constellation of free radical-related symptoms including movement disorder, psychosis, skin pigmentary melanin abnormalities, deafness, arthritis, and diabetes mellitus. The free radical theory of aging proposes that radicals underlie the aging process itself. Similarly, the process of mitohormesis suggests that repeated exposure to radicals may extend lifespan. Because radicals are necessary for life, the body has a number of mechanisms to minimize radical-induced damage and to repair damage that occurs, such as the enzymes superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase and glutathione reductase. In addition, antioxidants play a key role in these defense mechanisms. These are often the three vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E and polyphenol antioxidants. Furthermore, there is good evidence indicating that bilirubin and uric acid can act as antioxidants to help neutralize certain radicals. Bilirubin comes from the breakdown of red blood cells contents, while uric acid is a breakdown product of purines. Too much bilirubin, though, can lead to jaundice, which could eventually damage the central nervous system, while too much uric acid causes gout. Reactive oxygen species Reactive oxygen species are ROS or species such as superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, and hydroxyl radical, commonly associated with cell damage. ROS form as a natural byproduct of the normal metabolism of oxygen and have important roles in cell signaling. Two important oxygen-centered radicals are superoxide and hydroxyl radical. They derive from molecular oxygen under reducing conditions. However, because of their reactivity, these same radicals can participate in unwanted side reactions resulting in cell damage. Excessive amounts of these radicals can lead to cell injury and death, which may contribute to many diseases such as cancer, stroke, myocardial infarction, diabetes and major disorders. Many forms of cancer are thought to be the result of reactions between radicals and DNA, potentially resulting in mutations that can adversely affect the cell cycle and potentially lead to malignancy. Some of the symptoms of aging such as atherosclerosis are also attributed to radical-induced oxidation of cholesterol to 7-ketocholesterol. In addition radicals contribute to alcohol-induced liver damage, perhaps more than alcohol itself. Radicals produced by cigarette smoke are implicated in inactivation of alpha-1 antitrypsin in the lung. This process promotes the development of emphysema. Oxybenzone has been found to form radicals in sunlight, and therefore may be associated with cell damage as well. This only occurred when it was combined with other ingredients commonly found in sunscreens, like titanium oxide and octal methoxycinamate. Rose attack the polyunsaturated fatty acid, linoleic acid, to form a series of 13 hydroxyoctadecadinoic acid and 9 hydroxyoctadecadinoic acid products that serve as signaling molecules that may trigger responses that counter the tissue injury which caused their formation. Rose attacks other polyunsaturated fatty acids, e.g. arachidonic acid and docosahexanoic acid, to produce a similar series of signaling products. History and nomenclature Until late in the 20th century the word radical was used in chemistry to indicate any connected group of atoms, such as a methyl group or a carboxyl, whether it was part of a larger molecule or a molecule on its own. The qualifier, free, was then needed to specify the unbound case. Following recent nomenclature revisions, a part of a larger molecule is now called a functional group or substituent, and radical now implies free. However, the old nomenclature may still appear in some books. The term radical was already in use when the now obsolete radical theory was developed. Louis Bernard Guyton de Morveau introduced the phrase radical in 1785 and the phrase was employed by Antoine Lavoisier in 1789 in his Traité élémentaire de chimie. A radical was then identified as the root base of certain acids, the Latin word radix, meaning root. 
Historically, the term radical in radical theory was also used for bound parts of the molecule, especially when they remain unchanged in reactions. These are now called functional groups. For example, methyl alcohol was described as consisting of a methyl radical and a hydroxyl radical. Neither are radicals in the modern chemical sense, as they are permanently bound to each other, and have no unpaired, reactive electrons, however, they can be observed as radicals in mass spectrometry when broken apart by irradiation with energetic electrons. In a modern context the first organic carbon containing radical identified was triphenylmethyl radical, C6H5-3C. This species was discovered by Moses Gomberg in 1900. In 1933 Morris Karish and Frank Mayo proposed that free radicals were responsible for anti-Markovnikov addition of hydrogen bromide to allyl bromide. In most fields of chemistry, the historical definition of radicals contends that the molecules have non-zero electron spin. However, in fields including spectroscopy, chemical reaction, and astrochemistry, the definition is slightly different. Gerhard Herzberg, who won the Nobel Prize for his research into the electron structure and geometry of radicals, suggested a looser definition of free radicals. Any transient, chemically unstable, species, atom, molecule, or ion. The main point of his suggestion is that there are many chemically unstable molecules that have zero spin, such as C2, C3, CH2 and so on. This definition is more convenient for discussions of transient chemical processes and astrochemistry, therefore researchers in these fields prefer to use this loose definition. Diagnostics Radicals typically exhibit paramagnetism, but the bulk magnetic properties of an ion or molecule are often not conveniently measured. Electron spin resonance is instead the definitive and most widely used technique for characterizing radicals. The nature of the atom bearing the unpaired electron and its neighboring atoms can often be deduced by the EPR spectrum. The presence of radicals can also be detected or inferred by chemical reagents that trap i.e. combine with radicals. Often these traps are themselves radicals, such as tempo. See also YL Electron pair Globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals Hoffman Loeffler Reaction Free Radical Research Arc Center of Excellence for Free Radical Chemistry and Biotechnology References <laughs>